Hey friends, it is Natalie and I'm so excited because I am bringing you the biggest book haul I have ever done. Huge. I stopped counting at 50. But because this book haul is going to be so huge and so long, we have to jump right on in. This book haul is mostly YA. I think we have about 10 books in there, but I'm going to save those for the end. So let's get started. Let's start off with clickbait. In this book, our main character, Chloe, is out for revenge because last year her best friend, Monica, was able to work herself up into the most popular elite clique in school, but they did something that caused her death. Now, Chloe is ready to infiltrate this year and take them down. I love books that have to do with the social politics of high school. Next, we have Zero Day, and in this book, there's a character named Addie who has this notorious kidnapping. She's gone for about eight years. Meanwhile, her dad becomes president of the United States, and then she returns. But she's acting odd, and a lot of people think that she might have returned at that time for a reason. Maybe she's up to no good. Maybe she's under alien control. I don't know, but I definitely want to find out, so that would be a zero day. We shall see. Next, we have Unearthly. This is by Cynthia Hand. Cynthia Hand wrote The Afterlife of Holly Chase, which I really enjoyed, so I'm so glad I'm going to be jumping into another book by her. In this book, our main character is Clara, who finds out she is part angel, and she starts having all kinds of visions and crazy supernatural things happening, and she knows she has some kind of a purpose, but she's having a hard time figuring out what that is. So, and I also love the fact that it's purple and I can add it to the purple part of my bookcase. Next, we have Light as a Feather, which is also a series on Hulu. Our main character is McKenna and she's so excited that she's kind of lost weight and gotten contacts. She's kind of moved up in uh, popularity and she's hanging out with the cool girls. But there's also a new member of this clique and that is a girl named Violet who's a bit mysterious. And one night they play a game of a Light as a feather, stiff as a board. I never played that. Did y'all play that? If you did, let me know in the comments. But they play light as a feather, stiff as a board, where Violet predicts how they are going to die. And then crazy enough, they start dying the way she said. And uh, McKenna's trying to figure out what is up with this girl. Does she have magical powers? What is happening here? So definitely can't wait to check this out and check out the series as well. Next, we have Spellbound of the Lost and Found. Before I tell you what that is, please hit subscribe and please hit the notification bell. That bell is so important for somebody like me who does not have an upload schedule and kind of uploads very randomly, at least once a week, but it's not always the same day. So please hit that bell and please follow me on Instagram. Send me a DM and let me know that you are, you know, getting this from my booktube channel and uh, I will definitely follow you back on yours. So what could this be all about. This is about a small Irish town where things randomly start disappearing all around the town. Um, I believe our main character is Olive. Her friend Rose stops speaking for some reason. She meets a bunch of new friends who are kind of squatting in an abandoned house and they're going to come across a spell book and they're hoping the spell book is going to help them you know put everything back together, help to find all these lost things, help her best friend and um, I've never heard of this book but if you have let me know and it sounds really good. Next we have The Nest which doesn't have a huge synopsis, but from what I can tell, there's a family that has a new baby and some really weird looking, I can't even say people, because I don't know if they're people or aliens or witches or warlocks, I don't know, are going to show up on their door saying they're there because of the new baby. This is a small book. It looks like a fast read, but it sounds interesting. And once again, if you know about it, let me know in the comments. Next, we have Glitch, which I believe is a bit dystopian. In this book, Zoe lives in a world where there's no pain, there's no anger, there's no horrible emotions because because everybody has been implanted with a chip that keeps those horrible emotions away. Sounds like something I might want to use from time to time, right? But she starts to glitch, meaning she starts to feel things that she shouldn't be feeling. But in her world, if you're glitching, you could get in huge trouble and be killed. I guess eventually she finds other people who are glitching and they get together and I don't know if they're going to overthrow this government. I don't know if it's a good government or a bad government. Sounds kind of good to me. I know that sounds horrible. But we shall see in Glitch. Next we have The Apothecary and The Apprentices. I believe these are the first two books in a trilogy, which means I need to get that third book, right? And I believe these would be considered middle grade. Our main character is Janie Scott. She's 14. Her and her parents have just moved from Los Angeles to England, which is a huge move. She meets a mysterious mysterious apothecary and his son Benjamin and then the apothecary uh he goes missing and Benjamin and her find a kind of alchemy book that's kind of like a magic book that they are using to set charms and spells in order to get Benjamin's father 
back. So yeah, definitely need to get the third one, right? Because that sounds really good. Next, we have This Princess Will Save You. This came in one of the many book boxes that I get. And from what I understand, it's a retelling of The Princess Bride. Uh, if you have not seen the movie The Princess Bride, you need to stop what you're doing right now. Go watch it. It's amazing. It's going to be considered a classic if it isn't already. But in this one, the princess is going to be the hero. So very exciting. Love the Princess Bride. Love to see what they've done with this retelling. Next, we have Unravel the Dusk. This is a sequel to Spin the Dawn that came out last year and I believe was definitely my favorite YA high fantasy. Being a sequel, I have to tell you about the first one instead of telling you about the sequel to not give anything away. But basically in Spin the Dawn, our main character is Maya. She comes from a family with lots of brothers. There's been a horrible war that has taken so many lives and she has been trained to be a tailor. And then one day somebody comes from the castle or the kingdom. They need a new tailor for the emperor, but her father is just in too bad of shape. So she disguises herself as a boy. She goes to the kingdom and finds out that she doesn't just have the job. She has to be in a competition. And then in the second part of the book, she has to go and find all these magical elements to make these really special and crazy dresses for the emperor's new bride. Like I said, Spin the Dawn loved it so much and I can't wait to see where the story is going. So next we have All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. This is another book that is kind of like The Breakfast Club, kind of like One of Us is Lying, in that five students have been invited to a private dinner. Of course, one is the star athlete, one is the queen bee, one is the valedictorian. They get locked into this room with a bomb and a syringe and find a note that says you have an hour to figure out which one of you are going to die because the syringe has poison in it. It. And if you don't figure out who should die, you're all gonna die by the bomb. And so they have kind of a limited time to figure it out. Now we have The Last Girl on Earth. In this book, our main character is Lee, and she seems to live a pretty normal life. You know, she has a family that cares about her, she has friends, you know, pretty normal, except the fact that aliens well, it came about 16 years ago and kind of like took over the planet. And I, I'm assuming some of the aliens took her in. And so she literally is the last human on Earth. In fact, in the synopsis, it says her father is known as a human sympathizer. I don't know where exactly this is going to go, but just that sounds amazing. And I'm sure I'll let you know in one of the wrap ups if it's something you should pick up. Next we have Heretics Anonymous, which definitely has a very interesting cover. Our main character is Michael, who is an atheist who is sent to Catholic school. And according to the synopsis, once he gets there, he actually starts to find other outsiders, students who are like outspoken feminists or students who are gay and are not accepted by the school. And so they call their group Heretics Anonymous. And so when I read the synopsis, I thought, oh, I've got to read that. We have another book box book, and this is Set Fire to the Gods. One of our characters is named Ash. She is descended from a long line of gladiators. And then we have Maddox, who was fighting on the streets to help pay his uh, family's taxes. And then there is some kind of a revenge plot that is revealed that throws the two gods in some kind of fight. And the conflict between these two gods is going to be settled through gladiator games. So these two are gonna be kind of thrown together, having to fight, but they also realize that they can help each other. I have not read any of this, that's just from the synopsis, but definitely sounds, I love books that have kind of games and competitions. Next, we have The Astonishing Color of After. This is such a popular book on booktube. I don't feel like I need to give too much about it, but just for those who don't know, it's about a girl named Lee whose mother unfortunately commits suicide, and she believes that her mother has literally turned into a bird. She ends up going to Taiwan to stay with some grandparents and she follows this bird. And as she's doing that, she's uncovering all kinds of family secrets. Maybe she'll figure out why her mother did what she did. Next, we have These Broken Stars. If you guys watch my TBR game, you know I have to read this this month. This is about a luxury spaceship that crashes onto a kind of an abandoned planet and only two people survive. Lilac is a very rich girl and Tarver basically comes from nothing, but they, are, but they are stuck on this planet together and they have got to rely on each other to survive. And yes, I said before my other video, you have two people and it already says they don't like each other. I'm thinking there might be some romance going on as they try to figure out how to survive. Next, we have Where Dreams Descend. This is very popular on booktube right now. It came out in August. It was an Owl Crate book as well. Our main character is Kalia and she has uh, magical powers and there's a competition. Once again, I love books with competitions. There's a competition between the magicians to see who's going to headline this huge circus. Um, I've only read a little bit of it. It has been compared to Caravel and the Night Circus. Honestly, I don't see either of those books so far, but I'll definitely let you know I love books about circuses. What can I say? Next, I got the 
first two books in the Aurora Cycle trilogy, where the character Tyler is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams to go out and travel in space. And he doesn't really end up with the squad that he wants. And then as they are going out into space to begin their adventures, they realize they have a stowaway. The stowaway is named Aurora. She has been in a cryo sleep for 200 years and is the only survivor of a space accident. Aurora is obviously very confused trying to fit in in this new time and for some reason she has these supernatural powers and they're trying to figure out why. I'm not sure when the third book is coming out but if you know will you please let me know? Thank you. Next we have the Good Luck Girls. From what I understand uh, this is about five girls, five main characters and they are called the Good Luck Girls but they really are actually cursed in some way and then one of them accidentally kills somebody and the five of them are on the run. And their only hope is an old bedtime story that's been passed from one good luck girl to the next and might be the answer of how to get out of this situation. So I've heard really good things about it and that's why I ordered it. Next we have the June Boys. In this town there's a person known as the Gemini Thief who every July kidnaps three boys only to let them go one year later. This has been going on for 10 years. In this book, the main character is Thea and her cousin has been kidnapped this year. And as her and her boyfriend are trying to figure out who it might be, because like I said, they know it's a small town where this is happening, they start to think maybe it's somebody they know. Maybe it's even her dad. And so they're going to try to unravel this so they can, you know, stop the Gemini thief. Next we have Nixia, which I've heard is described as a space thriller. In the synopsis it says, Emmett's not just leaving Detroit, he's leaving the Earth. He's one of 10 recruits who are taken to a planet that they know nothing about, and in a competition they go down to the surface and try to mine a substance called Nixia. Now why they are mining Nixia and what in the world is going on is a mystery to all of them. But as this continues to go on and on, Emmett starts to question like, what is going on? What is this Nixia? Why have I been chosen? And they've also been paid like an outrageous amount of money to be one of these recruits. So he has to get down to what's really going on. Next we have Night Spinner, which I believe was also from one of my book boxes. And this synopsis sounds really complicated. I believe the main character is called Anabish. She's one of the greatest warriors in the Sky King's Imperial Army. And she is known as the Night Spinner because she can control the thread of darkness but supposedly at some point she accidentally loses control of her powers and then she's kind of put in some kind of a prison away from everybody else but then she is given the opportunity they say if you can go out and catch this notorious criminal that is really wrecking things then we will reinstate you as a warrior and all of her crimes will be pardoned next we have the memory thief and in this society Memories are currency. The main character is Etta. She's 17 years old and her mother has become bedridden and somebody, some powerful force, is putting her up for auction. And the idea is that if you win this woman that you can download her memories that must be valuable in some way. And Etta is going to do whatever she can to save her mother, including joining a rebel force. Next we have Life in a Fishbowl. And yes, I did get it because of the title. In this one, our main character is Jackie and unfortunately her father is diagnosed with an incurable brain tumor. And this then, in a desperate act to secure his family's future, he puts his life up for bid on eBay. Now, I don't exactly know what does that mean. I don't know if there's some kind of magical thing where you can take somebody's life. I don't know if it's like the Truman Show where he's going to let people watch him. I don't know what it means to put your life um, up for auction on eBay. So definitely going to have to read this one before I can tell you. And if you definitely, if you've read it, let me know. Next, we have House of Furies. They come here to die. The main character is Louisa. She has fled from a horrible boarding school that has done, you know, really harsh punishments. And a mysterious old woman offers her employment at a boarding house and she thinks that everything is all good now. But she quickly realizes that this is not just a lodging place. The mysterious owner, Mr. Morningside, seems to maybe be kind of executing dark justice on the people that come there. Now why? I don't know, but I heard it's really spooky. I've been into really spooky books lately, so... Here's hoping. Next we have the Lux, two sisters, one impossible choice. This is about two sisters who rule Manhattan's social scene, but they realize their status is far from secure. There's backstabbers everywhere. It seems like everybody is trying to bring these girls down. And the tagline is the age of innocence is anything but innocent. Let's talk about House of Dragons. In this book, the emperor is dead and there are five houses that are going to be able to choose somebody from their family to go fight for the throne. And it says, 
a liar, a soldier, a servant, a thief, and a murderer will be competing. So another competing book, and I believe they'll be riding dragons. So how can you go wrong with that? Next we have Get Even, which I see must be a Netflix show that I have not seen. So this book has four main characters who, in their school, they act like they don't know each other, they're from different cliques, but they all come together as four to get revenge on any bullies in the school. But when their latest target ends up dead, they realize that this little group is not as anonymous as they thought. So it sounds like they're going to have to try to figure out who actually murdered the person so it does not land on them. Next we have Star Daughter. Now this book has been everywhere lately. Almost every book box has chosen it as their book of the month. I have seen this on Book of the Month Club. It seems to be everywhere. The main character, I believe her name is Sheetel. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but she is half star. Her mother is literally a star that I guess can take human form at some point. But in some way she is summoned by the stars to compete with her powers. And that's all I know, but it sounds like it could be interesting. Once again, we're talking about competitions, which I love. And let me know if you've gotten this book, because I think almost everybody on the booktube got this book. Next, we have Losing Leah. If you watched my last video, which was the TBR game, this is another book that I have to read this month. In this book, we have a set of twins, Leah and Mia. And unfortunately, 10 years ago, Leah disappeared. And from what I've seen in the book, each chapter is told by one of the twins. So they kind of take turns. Uh, one is Mia, who's living a normal life. And then you have Leah, who is being held captive by somebody called Mother. And from what I read of the synopsis and said before, I believe they have some kind of telepathic thing going between them that hopefully will help them find each other. Next we have There's Someone Inside Your House. This is a book I've been wanting to read for a very long time. Our main character is named Makani. She has come to live with her grandmother in Nebraska because something horrible went down when she was living in Hawaii with her parents. And one by one, students at her high school start to be killed off in gruesome ways. Let's talk about the book The Naturals. I've been told this is like Criminal Minds except it's kids or teenagers. Our main character is Cassie and she kind of has the gift of being able to read people. And unfortunately, many years ago, her mother was killed in a brutal, horrible way. And she is recruited to become part of these teenagers that help the FBI solve crimes. And of course, she's also very interested in solving her mother's brutal murder. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, one of the killers that they're trying to find is very much has the same MO of the person who murdered her mother. So she thinks, oh my gosh, I might be able to find my mother's killer. So doesn't that sound good? I think so. Next we have Nemesis. He killed me, he killed me not, he killed me. In this book, it seems like the main character is Noah who is haunted by horrible nightmares. But the world around him starts to like unravel with panic and destruction and he realizes that he's been lied to. And the planet has a big problem. There's something called the Anvil, which is a huge asteroid that is plummeting towards the Earth. But the, in the meantime, Noah realizes that his nightmares that were about murders was, were actually maybe true. And so they're trying to uh, catch a killer or solve a murder mystery while also dealing with the fact there's an asteroid that is headed straight to Earth, which sounds like a lot to put on one's plate. But I guess Noah is going to be able to handle it. Next, we have Otherworld. Step into your future, leave your body behind. The main character is Simon and his best friend unfortunately stops speaking to him. And then she is in a horrible accident where she's in critical condition and barely hanging on. But he's able to communicate with her through Otherworld, which I guess is some kind of a virtual reality where maybe you can interact with uh, people who are in like a coma. It sounds very Black Mirror to me. And I guess as he's navigating in this other world, he starts to find out there's a lot going going on that he did not realize. Isn't it always that way in a book, right? I've heard this is the perfect book for people who liked Ready Player One, and that was definitely me. Next, we have the Diabolic with this crazy butterfly. And it says, a Diabolic is ruthless. A Diabolic is powerful. A Diabolic has a single task, kill in order to protect the person you've been created for. And I believe there's someone named Nemesis who is protecting somebody named Sidonia. Sidonia is an heir to the Galactic Senate. But then an evil, powerful emperor takes Sidonia hostage. And I guess Nemesis has to replace her and act as her in order to save her. That's all I know. It sounds really, really great. And we'll see if this Nemesis is able to save the Empire. I hope so, or this is going to be a really bad book, right? Next we have I Hunt Killers. 
Our main character is Jazz and his father is a notorious serial killer. And unfortunately he had was brought along many times to witness the horrible things his father did. Now Jazz is in a situation where he's trying to help the cops with everything he's seen and learn from his father as he's trying to prove that he himself, you know, is not a serial killer who's not evil, you know, even though he was a witness to so much crime. And for our last YA book, which I actually heard might be a new adult book, but you know what I mean, is a, I won't say a classic, but it's been recommended by everybody. It's very known on booktube, and that is A Court of Thorn and Roses. I might be one of the last people who has not read this series. And from what I've heard, this is some kind of retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And I heard Girly Girl Bookworm go on and on about how much she enjoyed this book, and honestly, that is why I ordered it. All right, let's start with the adult books. Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. Our main character is Amy. She goes to her neighborhood book club meeting and meets a new neighbor, a mysterious Angelica. And at the end of the evening, as a lot of people have left and the wine is flowing, the new neighbor Angelica says, let's play some games, some drinking games. And later on, Angelica confronts Amy saying, I know your deepest darkest secrets and you better give me a lot of money or I'm going to ruin your life. So Amy is in a position of I'm gonna have to find out what's going on with her and see if there's any dirt I can dig on her so that she won't share my dirt. So a lot of dirt, a lot of tea going around and who's going to come as the winner at the end? We shall see. Now we have The Last Flight which also I got because of Girly Girl Bookworm. From what I've read of the synopsis and what I've heard from Girly Girl Bookworm this is supposed to be about two women who are very unhappy in their lives, who somehow meet at the airport and decide to switch tickets. And then the main character gets on the plane, she's okay, but the woman who traded place with her, her plane goes down. So now the main character, Claire, has no other choice but to assume this woman's identity. So I've heard great things about this. I hope, I hope Girly Girl Bookworm was right. Next we have The Space Between Worlds. This is about a world where there's multiple universes, which I absolutely love. And in Kara's world, they have learned how to jump from one parallel universe to another parallel universe, known as multiverse travel. But there's a catch, isn't there always? You can only go to planets where the version of you on that planet has died because I guess two people who are the same cannot exist in that same universe at the same time. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's what I understand. But there are like 370 something planets that they are worlds or universes that, that she can travel on and she's only has eight that she can't. So I think it's kind of strange. She's wondering why am I dead on in so many universes have I died? And in that way, she's trying to find out a lot about her own life. And I'm really excited. I, I enjoy sci-fi and this sounds really, really different. Next we have The City We Became, which if you watch my TBR game, you would realize this is also something that I have to read this month. In fact, I've already started it. It's very different from any book I've ever read. Like I said though, I'm only in the beginning. But we start off with a character who comes to New York and completely forgets who he is and starts manifesting powers and finds out that there's other people who are starting to manifest powers as it seems some kind of alien race or alien being or an alien force is trying to destroy New York and they must figure out with their magical powers how they're going to, or maybe superpowers would be a better word, how they're going to save New York. I don't know anybody who's read this and not loved it. Next we have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I read The Guest List and I will talk about that in my next Reese Witherspoon book club review that is coming very soon. But after reading The Guest List, I decided I wanted to read something else by Lucy Foley and that is why I chose The Hunting Party. So a bunch of old friends who went to college together, but now, you know, they're older. Some of them have started their families. They meet up once a year on New Year's Eve. And a lot of times that's the only time they really see each other. And this time they've gone to some kind of a Scottish resort up in the mountains and they get snowed in completely where they cannot leave. And then we have a murder. And like the guest list, this book is told by multiple points of view by different characters. And you slowly are trying to figure out who done it. So I'm hoping this is as good as the guest list. Next we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And I've been seeing this book for a long time and I'm like, that book has my name written all over it. Our main character is Patricia who lives a pretty normal life in a small town outside of Charleston. They obviously have a book club of you know women in her neighborhood who they get very close and she slowly begins to think there might be a vampire or somebody vampire-like in their midst. 
And so, you know, she and her book club have got to figure it out. Next we have The Shadows by Alex North. In this, our main character is Paul, who has left the small town he grew up in because one of the teenage boys that he was kind of associated with uh, 25 years ago committed an awful, gruesome murder. So, you know, he's left the town. He wants nothing to do with it, but he has to come back because of his mother's death. And then there, I believe there's murders that start to happen that are very similar or might be connected to the gruesome murder 25 years ago. And he is once again drawn in to his small town to hopefully figure it out. And this is a spooky cover if you ask me. Next we have The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Um, I got this book because I follow a blog. I believe it's called Allison in Bookland. I'll definitely let you know if I'm wrong. But she put this as like the best book of one of the years she ever read. And it definitely, you know, caught my interest. Her main character is named Carly and she gets just really bad news that her she's pregnant and the baby that she's carrying has a heart defect. And it's 1970 and the doctors are telling her, you know, there's, there's nothing we can do. But her brother-in-law, who is a physicist with a mysterious past, believes he can help her. And whatever he suggests, uh, he says, you know, I can save your baby, but it's going to be just something crazy. I don't know what that crazy is. I don't know if it's going to be time travel or multiverse travel. I don't know what this physicist is going to do, but I really, it sounds interesting. And for somebody who has a blog and they have all these books and they put this as the number one book they read. And when I read the synopsis, I was like, this sounds like this could be absolutely amazing. And I hope so. We have The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I've had, there's been some Lisa Jewell books that I've loved and there's been one Lisa Jewell book that I DNF'd. So she kind of runs hot and cold with me. Our main character is named Libby and she's always kind of wanted to know who she is. I don't know if that, I'm assuming she's been adopted. And she gets a letter letting her know who her parents are, who her family is, and that she's inherited this huge mysterious mansion. And unfortunately, Libby doesn't know that there's a lot of people out there who have been waiting for this day, waiting for the time that she would come back. And she finds out that 25 years ago, uh, the police were called to the house due to hearing a baby crying and they find a healthy 10 month old kind of toddling around and then a bunch of dead bodies. Now, I don't know if Libby is this 10 month old. It kind of sounds like she might be, but there's a lot of mystery of what exactly happened. There was some kind of crazy note. You know, why was, I'm assuming her family killed off and you know, this baby is there, which like I said, I'm assuming is her. This sounds like this is probably going to be one I'll enjoy. Next, we have nothing to see here, but by Kevin Wilson and I got this one I'll be honest because it just I thought it sounded funny not haha -ha funny but kind of like weird funny so Lillian and Madison were roommates when they were in boarding school and they really haven't spoken in 10 years then Lillian gets a letter from Madison saying you've got to come help me and it turns out that Madison has two stepkids that when they throw a tantrum they literally like become ablaze I, I don't believe it hurts them I just think that they could like kind of like have fire all around them and they could hurt others not themselves so Lillian who really doesn't have a lot going on in her life decides to move in and over a summer she becomes close with these children and she tries to figure out why are they you know kind of you know exploding in fire when they're mad and you know she gets close to the kids and you know gets some answers and I've just heard really great things about this book last but not least one by one by Ruth Ware this was a must buy this is another book where a bunch of characters get snowed in at some kind of resort and they start dying off one by one and uh danny from current chapter said oh that kind of sounds like the agatha christie book which i can't think of right now where they're kind of i think it's a, and then there were none um it definitely sounds similar i've never had a ruth ware book where i've read it and not liked it i loved all of them so definitely can't wait to read this one. Thank you very, very much for watching my huge book haul. I will be doing my Reese Witherspoon book club review next and my other celebrity book club reviews very, very soon. Like I said, please hit subscribe and that notification bell if you would like to see any more of my videos and I'll check y'all out later. Bye.